Let's call the um, DRSC meeting to order for Wednesday, November 9th. And um, start with the approval of minutes. We have two minutes to approve. It looks like the one from October 12th um, and the one from October 26th. Um, Abby, I've got a comments. question for you. This is the one that was me and McCann. We're the only two there. Yes. I didn't want us to handle that. Um, if the uh, other members have reviewed the, the um, audio, you can. Um, I didn't get a chance to review it either. Then it, it could just be up to you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm be... fine with it. The only thing I, I'm wondering is since it was an alternate, would that be 202? It was uh, two zero. No, uh, the alternate steps in for for one person. So it's still be two zero. So it's, yeah. It's okay. Two, yeah. Well, I'll, I will make a motion if we can pass it with just one uh, in attendance uh, to approve the minutes of the October twelfth uh, design review subcommittee meeting. Um, I think they can second it. You just can't vote on it, right? Um, Hitting them with some tough ones today. Yeah, since it's just since it's just you, you I, I think you did. Um, I think we should probably get a a second if you support. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. <laughs> That's the 12th, right? That was the 12th. The next one's the 26th. 26th. Any comments on the meeting minutes from the 26th? I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's approved. And I don't have my folder to actually sign those, but I promise to bring it next time. How's that? Or um, we can drop them off during the week, anytime, whatever. Yeah, that's that's. So right. drop off. Yeah, right. that'd do the same. Okay. Right. Moving on. Uh, number two, we have uh, architectural review of the master project twenty one dash three twenty two, the Calvada mixed use project at fourteen thirty South El Camino Real. Uh, I can see the applicant is here. Um, Jonathan, you have a presentation you want to make? Yes, I do have a presentation, so we'll work through that. Uh, and yes, the applicant architect Hannibal, Mr. Hannibal Petrosi, is here. Um, and so once I get through the initial presentation, he might have some additional comments. Okay. Uh, okay, so the project in front of us today, uh, the Calvada Mixed Use Project, is located at 1430 South El Camino Real. It's in the gateway right off of the South El Camino Real off-ramp. Uh, this is the second review, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about this site since... Uh, well, this is the third. Second and a half. Yes, we, we did review <laughs> okay. in between without uh, full plans. So this is the second time we've looked at full plans. Okay. Um, but the, the scope and scale has not changed. We are still looking at uh, 10 apartment units. Um, and the corresponding retail and office space within the same building. The existing site, as I mentioned, is uh, directly across from the El Camino Real off-ramp on the south side of San Clemente. Uh, this is an updated rendering uh, of the project site, and this is going to be a perspective from near that stop, uh, stopping point as vehicles are exiting the freeway. Uh, one of the prior uh, notes from um, design review was to, to look at emphasizing this corner. So just a quick couple of notes about the changes here before we move on. Um, there's an uh, outdoor stairwell has been added with Spanish tile as well as the um, exterior fountain wall. Um, and some modifications have been made to the roof, including uh, locating the domed element down to this corner as well. 
There's a couple images here just for reference that we can come back to of other mixed use projects that have been approved and built in the city. So these are just for visual reference if we want to return to them at a later point. Uh, at this point, I'm just moving forward with, into visuals of the recommendations that are included in the report. So we'll move through those one at a time. The first recommendation uh, related to signs and glazing. So we, we didn't discuss signage in depth in the first review, but there was a note uh, of concern about the um, spacing, especially above and below the signs, that there may be um, inadequate room for those signs. Uh, so uh, staff did recommend a consideration of reducing the 10-foot glazing height in some of those locations. Uh, perhaps the primary entries could remain at that height, um, and uh, the other glazing elements could be reduced. There's a, a number of ways that that could be considered, but that would be one recommendation. At this corner tower location for recommendation number two, um, staff thought it might be a good idea to remove that decorative cornice and uh, consider a batter wall design, so to angle the, the walls in to really help emphasize that dome. So No worries, welcome. Thank you. This is Sean of the Applicant Team. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, and and that, per, that would open up the perspective, especially from the pedestrian or off-ramp view, to really see that dome. If it's an accent piece, uh, staff just thinks that that would help to emphasize that. Right now, that cornice might uh, really remove that visible angle to that element. So uh, this is not that same style, but just gives a, a, a very simple example here visually of kind of the inward sloping walls. Uh, and this is pretty common in Spanish colonial uh, elements where you have a tower that has a, a larger mass of the building, narrowing to smaller at the top, but then you do have like a very visible line of sight towards the accent items. Uh, recommendation number three was to minimize the parapet. Uh, so the large portion of the roof is a flat roof, so there's going to be a need for some form of a parapet. Um, staff thinks that there might be some room to push that back. Uh, you can see that there, there already have been some changes. The last time that you looked at this, this line carried all the way across, so the applicant already has tried to bring that down to be more sensitive to this center tower. Uh, the comment here, if you look at the roof plan in your plans, is, is more in, in line with pushing that further back. Um, on that roof plan, if possible. Oh, I have that here for us. So right now, the parapet that you're seeing is in this location. And so if we're able to push this parapet back, you'd still have visibility on it from, from certain locations, but it definitely would be less prominent. Uh, this may just be a rendering issue, but just to note that um, we would want to keep uh, the perspective of um, exposed rafter tails and, and not to have uh, fascia boards covering the rafter tails. Uh, some of these specific design pieces, what we could do as well as not necessarily uh, touch up all of the renderings, but incorporate some of these as conditions of approval so that when construction drawings come in, they need to have um, some specific notes. That would go for the um, tile comment that's coming up. In the, uh, soon as well. So recommendations five and six are both included here. Uh, again, detail things to be more consistent with our Henry Lenny design guidelines. Um, and one of those is long planes of glass is an element that, um, while attractive, is just not encouraged by the design guidelines. Um, so it would be better for us to, to, be, uh, to stick with either wrought iron or stucco um, in these locations. Uh, and then for stucco, note that all corners uh, should have bullnosed edges. Again, this is just one of those rendering things. You can't really see that level of detail, but we, we don't want to have sharp corners um, with the stucco. So that's going to be another thing that staff would recommend uh, including as a condition of approval. Uh, roof tiles uh, roll over rakes to slake the tile to encapsulate these tiles. So this is an image directly from our design guidelines to give that sample of what that looks like. Uh, and so applying this type of a treatment here um, on that front corner um, would be appropriate. And then boosters should be used at ridges, edges, and hips. Uh, so wherever we have the tiles, that's gonna be something that we recommend as well. Um, and can be done as a condition of approval that would not need any kind of design change on the plans, just um, providing that as a note here. Uh, in the sign program, there's a few comments. The first relates to the same uh, that we, we started with on the architectural side because it relates um, just spacing above and below that tenant sign that 
some additional breathing room may be necessary. Um, and then I just wanted the, the um, applicant team to comment on whether they propose any signage for the office tenants. There is some office space on the second floor. Currently, there's no signage um, shown for those tenants. Uh, the garage signage is shown as an ACM panel. I think that that should move in the direction of um, either just being a hand painted um, where you could have gooseneck lighting to illuminate it or a reverse lit um, to be more consistent with what we look for in signs in this area. Uh, and then finally, this is my, my quick and cheap uh, clip art uh, where I, I pulled the monument sign to a somewhat comparable scale and dropped it into this rendering because we don't have it shown, shown currently in the renderings. Uh, there's some concern about the location of the monument sign um, potentially blocking visibility to this uh, fountain element. And then as is shown in, in the plans, it's uh, at a perpendicular angle to El Camino Real. And so as, as you're driving south on that road, you really wouldn't have visibility to the tenants at the current location of the sign. So that's probably worth discussion with the applicant team too, finding a better um, landing place for that monument sign. Um, I already talked about this first one. You can see here, that's the note I was making. As you're driving along this road, the building will obstruct your view to this sign. So there's really no reason to have panels on the sign as shown. Uh, tenant nameplate should also be routed or reverse lit as opposed to an ACM push through. Um, and, and then one final note on that too was uh, staff's gonna recommend a minimum of, or a maximum of two lines of text. Uh, so that the signs don't become too too crowded per panel per panel yeah yeah and that concludes the recommendation so i went through those pretty quickly we can certainly revisit any of these slides uh, but if it's okay uh, maybe we can have the applicant comment on any of the updates or changes and, and i do have your <coughs> full rendering set available that we can go to if you want me to pull up any images uh, just yeah, before please, you just yeah. before you get started so you also have the befores. There, can we look at the? You, I'm sure you have those available too, so we can make a comparison if we need to. Because we had the original submittal, and then we had some sketches, and they were CAD sketches. But, right. And then, uh, then you've got your latest mm -hmm. submittal, right? Is right. that the sequence? Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, well, you know, uh, the comments are, are productive, and I I don't see any problem with it, you know, that we can adjust it. As far as the tile on the corner of uh, uh, the detail per the design guideline, that's what we have. If you look at the elevations, those are there. That elevation is the one, uh, that rendering is the one that is not reflecting it. If you go back to the other, uh, uh, from the alley side, then you would see it. Wow. Yeah, right there uh, on the middle, you know, it's not visible very very well. There is a uh, hip, oh, yeah, yeah. right there, yeah. And that should be typical for all of them. The slate. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's, and we detailed it, in fact, on our drawing, uh, uh, let me see what sheet is that. So you're talking about the pleated? Yes. Uh, yeah, and right. the, side of the, uh, the scallop or whatever we want to call it. Um, yeah. The uh, rape. It is. Oh, I've done the roof plan. Yeah, right there. See, that's the detail that we're using. That's going to go to all of them. And then we have the hip pin here. And then the same, you know, that's the detail. Who shows the sky? Like that's not called out here, but that's fine. I'm sorry. That, that's that. just using the tile. The actual, that detail is pleated uh, plaster. This one looks like it just has a little tile. Yeah, that's the tile. And well, that's what you showed over there, also I guess. That. Well, what um, um, there's actually a, a foam piece under the tile that right, right. That is, yes, that we can. 
Uh, that we can do it. Okay. That's not a problem. That's sure. Uh, that will just be a condition. Jonathan's right. uh, not a problem. Comments. Okay. Good. And uh, yeah, as far as the signage goes, uh, I, I think here the sign designer or the sign company. They I don't know if they contacted you. We recommended that to, they contact you for uh, other. Uh, code and the requirements of the sign. Now, as far as going down on our uh, storefront, that I don't see it, you know, again, any problem, except the one that we have, the arch type of transom, you know, uh, uh, at the front. Yeah, right there, if you go to the, uh, from the other side on this. Okay. Yeah, right there, see here. So if I want to reduce this, then uh, it's going to reduce the look of what I'm trying to achieve, you know, on, on the transom of uh, storefront. What are you talking about, the arch or the arch second? Arches, right, the arches, right. Well, I'm talking about the arches. That's that's where you're talking about, uh, Jonathan, right? The lowering it. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got the full arch and, the, and those right. openings. Yeah. Which you want to maintain, but you also have the truncated arch on different locations on the building. Like, yes, like on the other side. side. Right. Those mm -hmm. are yeah. Which I I prefer the the full arch, but if you have the truncated arch and we're okay with that, that's a way to achieve what we're looking for is right. to use those. I remember last time that's what I had, but then the discussion was to not repeat it or uh, don't make don't a mirror image. The, right, don't make a mirror image. You know, so uh, that's why uh, we changed it. I changed it, you know, to this. So well, what it's I, it's I can tight. do maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe what I can do, you know, stay with the full arch and then just lower the entire yeah. uh, storefront. Yeah, that would do. I think the, the, the comment basically is it just needs to have a little relief in the space or smaller letters. I mean, but this is letter size allowed, allowed and if you want to keep that size sign, mm -hmm. it should probably be yeah, you could probably a little wider. Just, just bring it down, down right. Little, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like so it would be just a little bit lower than the front entry. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need, I think, a full 18 inches or more to, to, with that size of a sign, with that height. Yeah, but then keep in mind, see, one of those has an entry door that is 7 feet. So if I lower that, it's going to go lower than 7 feet, and then I cannot achieve the full uh, arch in there. Well, I mean, and the way you have it currently, though, centered on the building, if, if you want to keep it that way, I don't know that you would need to lower your and your entry, the arch that what, that includes your entry door here. I think that lowering the springs of these two arches slightly. It's going to look bad. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. I think because of that one element. Um, I th you know that's another another way of doing it is. Just raise the balcony, you know, the balcony. So I would create the balcony over there and raise that. By that would work. I mean, is that the, is that, that's just a Romeo and Julia one that you can't even really walk out of, right? Uh, right there. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right there, yeah. So it'd be yeah, easy to, to put the curve. Just, yeah. that, that would do it. Yeah, that would do it. I can just raise that. Other than that, uh, you know, I I welcome those uh, comments to incorporate it, you know, to our. So, so this this is your submittal. You, let's just talk about the, the dome element. Do you think? Yeah, that's well, yeah. I think what he's saying, uh, I, I can try that to uh, shape it down because the roof is what forty two inches below. 
that parapet concrete. No, roof is about 30 inches, 30 inches below. Yeah. Yeah, that I can do. I mean, even from across the street, you're not going to see that, though, because it's set back from that vertical yeah. parapet. Right. So, so down the ramp, off certainly when you get at the off at the off ramp, you can see it. That's right. So what are we supposed to do? You're going to bring the parapets down around it? No, get rid of the parapet and then uh, uh, shape it down. Oh, like the other picture. Right. Okay. It would be only on two corners, you know, though. The front corner. On uh, those, the front two corners. First thing this. It would be on this corner and this corner in here. These two. You're talking about clip clip the corner detail. Yeah. Yes. And, and like what you showed, you know, on a, a church. Yeah, well, it, it's not really going to expose all that much of the, the dome, but... Uh, um, and also what I can do, maybe lower uh, the parapet over there, so you can see more of... Uh, well, it looks like you've introduced this, you know, corbel element, which I assume is a plant on in some locations, but not in others. Like the parapet that is pulled back in the center, uh -huh. that doesn't have the corbel, right? No, that does not. No. Okay. So I've seen that done pretty well, and it's, I think it's in the, in the guidelines, where you don't have such a heavy um, corbel on the, on the top, or the cap, or whatever you want to call it. And that also could help. And, and even where you've got the the other caps in the, in the back, um, those are pretty, uh, you know, I don't know how those fit in with the guidelines, but they seem pretty heavy, heavy handed. There's really not a scale that's called out in the guidelines. Um, but the detail. Well, the guideline, I see. Uh, I don't think you need it at that location if you focus on the design of the tower. Let's just call it the tower with the, with the dome. I, I don't even think it's a tower. In fact, I think it's competing with the center. Like, to me, there's tension in that building. You just look at it, you know, you see, uh, I feel tension between the center, peak roof, and the corner. They're competing with each other. I, I, I'm not sure what, what, you know, what the expression is here in terms of the design and what it's, the story is trying to tell. Is the story is trying to tell, hey, we want you to focus on this corner, this, and we're going to have a vertical element, and we're going to have a water feature, and then the building just is has different movement in, you know, of the massing? Or are we trying to focus people on the center? That's, to me, where I'm confused in the, what the design is doing. So I think either, I mean, I think it was great that you're trying to do this, and I like this building a lot. I think it's beautiful. That's my only feeling about it is I think you need to go pivot one way or the other. The, the center's good, but it, then it's, it, I'm just not sure what the corner thing, and I do see the value of the corner, because that's kind of what everyone's going to look at. Um, but it's almost like you need to raise it up and make it more prominent. Well, I think yeah, they can't do that. They can't do that. I think if you battered it and you had the sort of the clipped corners and not just on the front, but so that it appears as a complete well, it, it doesn't yeah. look like you can do that at the end, at the, at the back, because there's See, if I, if I get rid of the moldings or cornices at, on the tower, you know, then might as well, as you said, you know, get rid of the other ones, and then do some very flat uh, parapet. Mm -hmm. And then there is no corbel, you know, on the other side, on that uh, wall. Uh, so another thing is by moving that parapet back, there is a reason I have that. There is, a, if you go to the other, uh, you can see it better. Uh, we're putting the rooftop units in there. So I'm trying to hide the rooftop units. Uh, the not to be visible. type equipment? Right. Not to have uh, 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 visible, you know, from outside to look at it. So that's why I have it in there. And then as you can see, uh, at the center uh, would block that, where I have the tower and the center. So by bringing this back, uh, uh, I really don't know what would happen. Well, it's going to be flat roof over there, but then you need some kind of protection for that flat roof. 
uh, I have a pitched uh, tile roof that has to come up at one point, you know. So that's why I, I need that uh, type of parapet. Well, you actually make a good point because when you exit the freeway on South Carolina, around, you're at a higher elevation, right? I've been looking down at the building. So you're going to see that. If, if the parapet is only as tall as the mechanical units, you're still going to see them as you exit. Now we are getting a um, two-story building on that corner. It's adjacent to the ramp. <coughs> so as you get down near the tail end of the ramp, you'll be looking at the back of that building until you turn towards, you know, really facing perpendicular to El Capino. Is that still going to be a veterinary clinic? Is that what there's a plan for there? Yeah, dental office. Or dental office. office. Oh, dental office. Dental office. So your point is that you won't see you'll it. you'll see it when you first get off the freeway. Halfway down, you're going to start being interfered by that yeah. other building. Oh, by the time you get to the signal, so you don't think it'll be a problem. No. <laughs> and you know, um, uh, I mean, it'd be nice to see the sight line there because you don't want to see mechanical. It, I'm sure you don't. Well, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at it. Of course, if there's a parapet wall behind it, which ties into everything, um, this then can be pretty close to the height of that pitch, where the pitch roof is hitting the wall. Mm -hmm. That lowers it. Um, they can't go any higher with it. Um, the dome wasn't something we uh, suggested. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's always been. And to... Um, no, I had it in the center. No, 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 but you've always had a dome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I always yeah. had a dome, right. Um, Cameron's question was, you know, being balanced, and what are we looking at? Lenny's guidelines kind of allow this kind of, or recommends it, because he always likes about saying, you're telling a story with this building. Yeah. It wasn't built all in one year. He likes to see things that evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And this kind of that's that. Is yeah. the dome supposed to have like a Moorish type influence? Is that um, intention? That was certainly something that was all over Spain. The mosaic. But the, sure the, the Moors came in and you know you had took that over Moorish influence with the Spain uh, rats. numerous times and were yeah. sent back, and the architecture changed. Yeah, we're not looking for mid um, <laughs> That's what they tried to do on the bridge for the uh, for the outlet. Do you remember that? I remember that over there. Yeah. I think the contrasting is good between the colorful tiles and then the dome to be more muted. That contrast is nice, and that muted color could even be tied into the sign program, too. could match it. Uh, let's go back to that corner elevation. Sure. Uh, talking about that whole element, um, we're just, right now saying that this is the most visible part as you get off the freeway. That's not the only way you'll approach it. Uh, let's, that one. Um, that balcony is probably the most visible thing we're going to see. Yeah. It's a residential balcony. There's going to be furniture on it. There's going to be beach towels, whatever. And I'm a little concerned what that's going to look like because that is a dwelling unit. That's a really And their major point. living space. That's a really good point. So there's going to be a table probably out there. And I'm thinking maybe a solid element's a safer way to go to make it there. That's the affordable unit right there? No, no, this no. is a nice yeah. two bedroom. Well, okay. that's the affordable unit, yeah. The affordable yeah. unit's in yeah. the middle, isn't it? No, no that's not the affordable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is the only residential on the unit on the yeah, front that's side the of the building. Could we do the same type of Romeo Juliet no. balcony there? Is that what that's, that's what I mean, I was that would be more right. appropriate, I think. Yeah, I, I need to have that's something a there, you know, to uh, break this mess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is two bedrooms. Yeah, that's the one. But it is. It yeah, is that's not the. Is that it the is affordable? affordable yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the affordable. Two bedroom affordable unit. Yeah. Mm. More likely that you will get more stuff on there then. Well, um, but yeah, you, have to, you one of your core principles got to have some outdoor, private outdoor space. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm right. not saying you can't have a space, but um, I'm thinking of a totally transparent handrail may not be. Uh, maybe I can call it somehow. Maybe it's like the center, stuck out in. the entrance, main okay. center, you know, over the entrance. Yeah, yeah. something like that, I think, yeah. might do it. Yeah. Like I think if you made that little, where the holes are there, yeah. that little yes. something like there, that. that yeah. looks better. But to express yes. that cornice. 
Yeah, so in other words, you're talking about the yeah. stucco treatment that's similar to this yeah. here. Yeah. Right. And then, then it could be more of an architectural statement as well, yeah. with some donations on it even. Yeah, but yeah it's, that's, it's that's mainly a, just that is a focal element. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I see it. it just needs to be expressed. Yes. Yeah. I'm Especially so you can really see the dome. Thank you. What, and if you, what if, you be, if you did, I kind of personally, sorry Steve, but I kind of think this is interesting because this is very plain and it separates it a little bit. If you did remove this down and you kind of notched it, uh, maybe that's what yeah, gives, clip, gives, that's what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this flared, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't disagree. I, yeah. I think that we just need to see some expression of that corner element as a complete element, you know. And that way you'll be able to pick up the, the dome. And to that point, while we're on it, if you put the monument sign even in this area, I think it takes away from the whole. I think it should, personally, if you kept that sign program, I mean, that sign is enough. I mean, why would you even need a monument sign? If you're going to have office space, that could be a directory inside. I'm not even sure you need it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, uh, because what, what we're doing here is not going to be a retail going to be a restaurant as you can see you know I set it back there is an arcade underneath where they have right there so it would be a restaurant uh, it would be four four of them or maybe three and they are uh, it's nice to have the covered outdoor space too uh, that I, I like the fact that that is you know, you have that in that sp interior space there. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so. That's why I think that makes that whole in that corner inviting. Mm -hmm. This interior space invites right. you to want to <clears throat> go and interact with this building. And making this as attractive as you can. I would even step that out if uh, enough, but... Well, I'm right on the property, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you, what's interesting here is, is that when you pull out here, this is actually going to be the most prominent two facades. Mm -hmm. Looking at it, this will be seen by people going this way. But these are the two problems. Fun. That could be a very nice painted sign. I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing. Yes. Or, yes. Right there. Instead yes. of a, instead of an element out here, you just have put it on the building. Yeah, like a paint. You know, like the old school, mm -hmm. hands and painted. Yeah. You know, with even a lit structure yep. on it at night. You know, kind of listed down. You know, if you don't need a true directory. Well, as um, long as, no, as long I'd, as I'd as even accept I, one over I, the, I like that. Yeah. Well, over the fountain. Yeah, put it right on that wall over there. Yeah, that'd be as long as we can have the tenant uh, signage of the building and same thing with the office that we have in the corner, I think we should be okay. Okay. Yeah, the monument it. sign can come up, right? And then we put the monument yeah. for the building. We can just put little sign. painted signs mm -hmm. on the hotels and things. Yeah, we've got lots of examples. We just that. did that, I think, on another one similar similar to this, the one where the. Uh, uh, that gelato shop was. Mm -hmm. We I think we went oh, with the yeah. painted sign for the drive. Over the Yeah, not there. No, no, just that's down the street, yeah. across oh, from the zebra. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, that one. Okay. I love that blue tile work. It's pretty. Mm-hmm. I mean, on just, the stairs too. I just love the Spanish tile work. So, what, what's the, the thought on fountains? Is that something desirable? What's a new, neutral? I think, I think it's cool. fine. I mean, it's part it's, of the... It's yeah, it's 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 like sitting Gary on the other side, you know, so I thought maybe the sound of waterfall and... No, it takes away from the... the I think it will be a distraction from the, the street noise. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's a very inviting spot right there. And I think you should, that fountain will add some ambiance to it. It's a really nice corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like the Romeo, like the little... Uh, like your idea on that, there it looks heavy almost in one way, but having it integrated with that looks look a little more. Yeah, you mean the one that's. Have you seen the building that's going up? Caddy part of this. Well, he just had a picture of it up there with the with the Michael. Uh, <coughs> yeah, the no, dental building. Oh, that's across the street. That's Sorry. the dental. Yeah, yeah Michael Luna's. Uh, oh, the the uh, coffee shop, the restaurant office. But that's on the other side of the street. That's right? on the other corner. Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting so, to, to see about, like, if you're going to have two on opposites, is there a way? Yeah, well, I kind of like having a dome on one yeah, side. it really does complement nicely between the two. Yeah, there's a little dialogue going on because yeah. you've got that element on the corner. They have that little wall up there, which is kind of interesting. 
on that side. But yeah, it looks it's nice. The this will be one of the nicest um, uh, entries to the city. And you got those three buildings. Uh, there yeah, this intersection. No, yeah, for sure. I think the pub that that little fountain, this, that nice little public art space, is a really nice accentuation point. There. The south of the town needs this. I think yeah, they, well, I totally. They really do. Yeah, we're excited about these. I things. think this is going to be a win for the community. They're going to want this. Oh, absolutely. Is this is this a recess? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, I have 12 inches. I don't know if that's yeah, we've got a, if you look at the other, can we go back to the building, the yeah. Luna building across sure, the street? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, there's something like this. I don't know if it needs to be full circle. Well, you know what's nice when you have this? I had it thing. before on oh, the previous, yeah, I had the previous one. It does matter. Oh, this is on um, the yeah. other corner. But that's not so open, right? It's just bars over. Situation. No, it's not open. It's just a recess, you know. I, I think I different think. ornamentation would be would show better than just, to me bars where you can't see through is prison like. It's just I would get rid of the bars and put ornamentation around it that's ornate that would well I'll do something I think other than help with the, the top the crown molding on the top of the building ties it in. Yes, that and then the top. Well, you have an element like this on the in and out building, but there's no um, covering like this. It's just an inset, and it has a like a darker brown paint, so it kind of just feels oh, like it's inside. Yeah. It feels like it feels like a closed window or something like yeah. that. And the sill, maybe a sill piece. I mean, that, that could be yeah. upped a little bit. You know, yeah. but it seems a little pedestrian. Yeah, and have in the back. If you go in the back. Uh, I have something like that. On the rear elevation? No, I cannot make the window. No. It's, it's in the middle. I didn't see, yeah. I don't recall seeing that anywhere else. Yeah, uh, well, else see, you see on the corner, uh, oh, sorry, here. On, yeah, on, on the corner over there, you see there's a uh, circle which is a hole in oh, there. Oh, a small. Yeah, right there, and then I have on the other sides also. <laughs> what is that? Looks like a ladybug on the building. <laughs> oh, out <well>, in this. <laughs> Small. See now it's big and pretty small. <laughs> oh yeah, that yeah. <coughs> well, how are you going to deal with the roof, the roof drainage? Uh, well, I have uh, uh, cut gutter all, all the way around. You just don't yeah, show the I have all the way around. You do? Okay, I couldn't tell. Where do they? Yeah. Where do they drain to? Is it into, inside the building? They go. They go right into this storm system. No, you're going to have a collector. What do you see? Well, yeah, we have. But well, you will see them. Uh, we will have uh, gutters and uh, yeah, our down spots on the building. On the building, yeah. Okay. Can, how do you guys feel about moving that to the inside of the building? Well, there's a detail where the downspout comes back in. Yes, and then that, and then, then, then goes in. Drain. Right. It doesn't come all the way down. Okay. That's what yeah. you're going to do. Right. Oh, okay. Great. And that is in the guideline, I believe. Yeah. No, uh, that's exactly what it says. Yeah. I thought she was like, no, 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 no. nothing is coming down. Yeah, okay, cool. Jonathan, can you so, note that as a condition? Yeah. Sure that yeah. I, I would right. assume that the water quality management plan is going to make you have a rather large storage. Well, we already have, yeah. Device it's already designed. Filtration. Yeah, yeah. water quality filtration. So right. All of that stuff. Yeah. And, and then, then are you going to bury the, your roof tiles at all? I'm sorry. How are you going to vary the roof tiles? Can you can you were you thinking about varying the roof tiles? So does it all look uniform, manufactured, machined? Oh, no, it's not. There are two pieces. There are two pieces. They're not manufactured. You know, there are two pieces uh, with the uh, actual clay. Yes. Uh, with the variation of the color, you know, natural color. Okay, so you will have so that. It's not like factory made. You know, tie. Okay. It's all uniform. Yeah, with random packing. Yes. Ran yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. And you're going to do the 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 packing inside the mortar. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I, I have a detail. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. It's a standard condition. What one thing that I might modify to that standard condition is specify also some uh, boosters on the ridges just to help those ridges. Um, yeah. That would be more clear. Clear. That's what I was. Th that's why I was asking about the mortar. If you were. Oh, I, that's what you would have. I think <coughs> I have it should be on the. I think you yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a standard. I think the boosters would add a lot. You mentioned that too. Yeah, yeah and I, one thing I might change just. Um, you see, in here it is solid and inside. See, we have a grout in there, and you would have the same thing. Okay. 
Yeah, it's just, and I, I think, think it's I, just your AutoCAD system. Right. This makes it look manufactured to me because it, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's not. It's just the AutoCAD. Needed, right. Yeah, okay. triple, yeah, I called it over there. You know. Okay. You have the start top, double or triple starter course. Sure. Well, um, you mentioned, you, like you I mentioned said, we have a uh, standard um, condition of approval for the roofing. That requires that. Yeah. Requir it, it specifies the amount of um, grout to be used. I would recommend part of the pry. I, I might modify that language a little bit to include or, or specify that as the minimum, um, but requires some deviation. Sure. So in and out meets all of the requirements, but from a distance it, it looks pretty uniform. Looks pretty uniform yeah, because I, there's not a deviation in the amount of grout. So they meet the condition, but to allow for a little more deviation. And, and then that's one of the things that we would talk about at like a pre-construction meeting is yeah, that yeah. we want some variation in the roof. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and uh, Jonathan can find you a good example to show the roofing contractor, you know, this is what we want it to look like. Okay. okay. I wonder if the tower is something that we can condition or we need to get, have a look at that. Look, just that corner element. Even if it's yeah, I'm informally, gonna it. I'm going to revise it. Send okay. it to you. Even if we have an informal look at it, yeah, yeah, that's okay. a pretty important. Well, you've come well, so far from our original meeting that I'd hate to see him come back again. And yeah, you're well, just look at do it at the PC, right, right? Just do it nice at, at the PC. Yeah, I, I can't revise it. You know what we talked those, I have the corner and the uh, the sign on the wall. The moldings, you know, and the, some of the other things that you talked about, I can modify that and send it to you. I'm not sure if you need to have this meeting, but then you can look at it, you know, when I say email. Well, it has to go to Planning Commission anyway. Yeah, yeah, so we'll be able to review it at the Planning That's Commission. Before, before Planning Commission, commission. Yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we need, need to be respectful of this. Before the meeting. Right. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we, we want to say you've really done a great job. Of, yeah, of thank you. Bringing it along. Yeah, you're it's talking a super about super important corner here. Yeah, excited to have it on that intersection. That's going to be a nice little part of town. Thank you. You're adding to the community branding. <laughs> this is going to be good. I'm going to jump back to um, the signs and just see if there's any other comments that the commissioner or committee members have on this. How many potential? So it says the implication of the signage on this drawing is there'll be three tenants. Is that? It would be four tenants for four tenants, but then spaces the are level. small on the ground level. The spaces are, uh, the units are small, but then they can have, uh, uh, one entity can have two of them. However, due to the slope of the street, you know, we have on each unit, you know, I have about six or seven inches step where we have the mising wall. So if someone would have two spaces, then we have to accommodate the ramp, you know, somehow. Inside. Yeah. So he asked a question too about the tenant signage for the office upstairs. Is there any plan or is that just going to be? Well, that's what I was asking. If, if, if you're going to uh, take away the monument sign, maybe we can allow the office to have some sort of a uh, sign on the building as well. And how would you propose to do that? That's the question. Because it's not really a lot of wall space. I would, yeah, you could do a pop out or something like that. That's so that's the, office, the one that would be in, in the middle. At the no. very end, you know, is the office. Yeah, this side is the it's office this, also. This yeah. area. Yeah, the office is upstairs, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's off the entry courtyard. Yeah. Well, you can <laughs> but maybe we can do, you know, right at the main entrance. Yeah. Uh, over there, put the two offices, you know, if the, because it would be a two offices. Yeah, because this is the access, main access into it. Right. So I then put two of them, you know, I have enough room over there for two line of the offices' names. Mm-hmm. Since we're going to have uh, maybe a center's name, Calrada Mixed Use or whatever the name would be on that wall, then we would not have like a, uh, each tenant's name on that uh, painted uh, sign. Mm -hmm. 
And then but that will be just with the name of the center. That name of the center, and then over there, the and center, the we can put the office's name. Is there a master sign program? There, there needs to be one, yes. Okay. Is that tracking with this project, or will that come back? It, it is tracking with this project. Okay. Yeah. So, this so we're is going to see Yes, but I mean, it, in this case, it's only the proposed location of those four signs, right? So if any ten, future tenant comes in, they're held to this same location, size, so and it materials. Is part, it is part of this. And you're going to have the, the three options, right? The, like the halo lit or the, or the just the lettering, raised lettering, or hand like something like that? Well, so that that's up to the final... and. Please comment on that if you have a preference today. We've had we have some master sign programs that allow a choice. Some of them will specify one of those as the only option, like only hand painted. Oh, for and all four the same. Cor yes, or we have, so we have master sign programs that will do either, where they'll okay. say like the entire building must be hand painted, for instance, or all tenants can choose between option A, B, C. But then um, it has to be consistent across the whole. See, that's the problem. We did that where we have that. Uh, Lazy Dog or whatever gelato place. To me, I, I just didn't like it because the sign program was cool, but it was chopped up. Like, oh, I picked option B, but I picked option C, I picked option B. Mm -hmm. And it looks chopped up even though it's the, the material, the coloring is the same. Yeah, so, so right now the proposal is for reverse lid. Two offices are up um, for all oh, Like, these. is that what the um, halo? Office. Yes, halo yeah. lid. I love that, I think that looks awesome. Okay. And then well, the, they couldn't the do a blade sign kind of non halo was I, yeah blade no, signs no. what I was thinking for the office sorry sorry John no 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 problem. yeah the blade sign I was yeah, yeah. you could just put the blade there's sign only two right here on the front and there would be not that assuming I think but how how big of a blade sign can you put in there is it going to be noticeable from uh, when you come off the freeway or when you're driving down see to me those are small offices if you're going it's like going to be an accountant or something Very like small, that. exactly yeah so that per, anyone going there knows they're going there it's not you're not advertising to the world come see me so that's why i think a small blade sign is appropriate for that use because every person that's going to go there is going to have it in their gps and they're just going to be trying to figure out where i park <laughs> you could have two jonathan can uh, and It'll be on both sides, so coming up or down. Yeah, you'll see it on that. Confirm, you know, confirm I'm at the right uh, place. It could be something that's integral with the light fixture, you know, below it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're lit. Is it mm -hmm. a philosophy where one is halo lit and the other is is a different, like painted or, or with, with not instead of backlit? I know you want a consistency, but. No, we've done that. The, the nice thing about the, the um, halo lights don't really meet that handmade quality look that, that they're allowed by code. Um, so as a purist, it would be, yeah, I'd rather have it painted on the wall, but it's not something we demand. The painted one of the, the last experiences I have had when you paint it, when the tenant moves out and you get a new tenant in, then the signs start looking different. Because yeah. one is oh, yeah. and lighting it is gets funky too. Yeah, you know, I like this the... blade. I like this blade sign, and then maybe so maybe see there is two. One of them is here, which is the smaller one. The other one is here. So if you don't have no sign here, I almost don't like the sign. You know, goes on the wall, especially when they have colored full out. Well, if that's you also can put the, the problem with the halo ones because unless you put tracks right on the wall, to so maybe we can have mm -hmm. one in here. And then one in here, on either side, rather than over there, you know, put it in one in here and one in here, so you don't have this sign in there. And then you would have sign. It'd be playful. It's certainly more pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you know, need to have these signs with the tenants, though. But uh... so okay. we're in the process. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe yes, so right. Maybe these two locations. Yes. Yeah. Um, Okay. I am hearing a preference for not a menu, but keeping it to one sign type for... That's just my personal tenants. preference. I'm not an architect. I'm just giving you... <laughs> How are the other buildings doing it? Yeah. One type of sign. Yeah, yeah very. Yeah, it's one, one type of the, much thing is about the, with the size of this building that I think would be a benefit to have a menu of choices is that... Um, 
consistent sign types, style, colors, are going to make, are going to reinforce this is one big building. Whereas I think what the design and subcommittee has done a really good job of is compartmentalizing this building, breaking it up into smaller pieces, and a variation in sign type yeah. is would play into that mm -hmm. that look of smaller yeah. buildings. I think you together. have to be more specific though on the review if it's going to be that way. I don't yeah, think we I could just do a master can you sign. Up the um, lending guidelines, sure, and pull up the signs and um, see if you have some national tenant. Oh, uh, they, they, they have, have their own logo, logo, you know. So they're different color, and they are. But then I like this blade, you know, right where you're showing office. it for the offices. Yeah, yeah the office yeah. is not going to be a national yeah. tenant. It's going to no, be yeah. some local yeah, that's lawyer right. or an accountant. It's going to be some architect. It's going to be no, something they, like they, that. Well, um, even a national. They've got a. Uh, <coughs> uh, the Lenny guidelines have a illustration of signs. You know, I've seen. So the, I think it's at the bottom. I've of seen it, sign types in Santa it's Barbara and around that have really unique blade signs that match kind of an older character. Mm -hmm. Without that really modern. That's what I'm kind of talking about. Feel yeah. is there where you know where you have like things that like hang or attach or like a you know you used to have a hang shingle. shingle. Mm -hmm. You know, I say I'm mm -hmm. hanging my shingle up. Something that fits that. Yeah, they even use the having that banners. Manufactured. Um, we even did it on the nail. Is there it is. Kind yeah. Of um, with yeah. blade sign. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send it to them. You mentioned yes. there's going to be a Library, project sorry. name. There, uh, sign? Is still up, I guess. Do we know what that looks like, Jonathan? Sorry, give me just one second. We're trying to find the We're trying to find the sign. Find the sign, sign, sign and then... Oh, I'm wrong. Sorry, I wasn't the one. Yeah, the, the other project, um, mixed no, use, no, that was done by the, uh, the interior, like a uh, uh, four. Oh, oh, so four. That's not. It's that's only not four. Actually. actually, four offices internal. No, no, no. Offices is yeah, only two. Two. Only okay, two. So yeah, right off that courtyard, on the top. That's the center. Center. Okay. So they they can have their own signage without even having to be like a, you know, like a. You know, yeah. it, it might be our code section or our regular under the signage section guidelines. Yeah, there's some illustrations in our code. Uh, that's that. That we might be show some examples of. Okay. Uh, I'm pop that open and then I'm gonna. If that's PDF, you can do a search for sign. I mean, even the halo backlit smaller ones next to that front entrance could not be that, you know. Personally, I don't. If you, he's. To me, there's a conflict with the lighting because if you've got these lantern style lighting and then you've got put hand paint and now you're gonna have gooseneck to light those up. Yeah, to right. me, I feel like the consistency does add a level of design elegance to it as well. You've got the combination of the Spanish colonial, but then you've got consistency, so it's pleasing. And the reason why I like the halo lit is because at night, especially for restaurants, it pops. But it's not glaring. It's not obtrusive. It, it's warm. They were showing just that's not the illustration I'm thinking of, but uh, yeah, projecting yeah, wall mounted sign, yeah. uh, Spanish detail. But for the um, those two offices, uh, uh, I, I like this. Would be really, I like this cool. blade. I like this blade very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it will work, and it can be light. It can be illuminated too. Yeah. In like a can, yeah. internal can. Well, it is. It is where we have a, a wall sconces over there, so mm -hmm. that light can be shine on it. You know, so oh, you don't do that. Have to, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, one of those cool options: the external lights, the hand painted signs, all the signs. I just, I think I showed that. Yeah, like it should point. be on the corner. So maybe with that corner. Which, I mean, yeah. no, no, Mark, do you have any thoughts or, or, or a committee about the, the, We talked about a project identification time. The program doesn't show on right now. Um, but yeah, that, that's totally their choice. We yeah. don't. Um, you you did mention you're going to have one, though, right? Constructed no, or a project name, sign? Uh, yes, we're still working on that, but there is going to be a project name, yes. Okay. 
Right. And you're thinking of putting that? Just thinking of putting, putting it, it in, in here. Right. Uh, right on that wall over there by the... Uh, yeah, the right balcony. there. Yeah, right oh, there. okay, cool. Paint it. I'm trying, I'm trying to think what the other one was. They used the street address. This numbers, is a like ten something, something. Yeah. something. Had, had a number in it. Yeah. It was ten something. Let's see if I have the... This is a sign that we did on one of our projects where it's on like it. mosaic. Yeah, they I use see. the tile. You could probably, if you can get on the. Yeah, I mean, this is very. You can see how. Um, it's actually it's, much movement. Yeah, they use ceramic buildings. tile. Oh, in a frame. Pretty mosaic. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it, well, we'll see. We had those mosaics on the little holdouts on Del Mar. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love the mosaic. If you can get on the internet, you can. Well, you guys can see this, but yeah. Um, if you go on our website, this is one one of our projects. This shows the the project sign. Can I? Sorry. It's funny because if you move that balcony back on that side there, you would make room for a hand painted sign. That's, that's the project that's sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have a name. It's it's just kind of a, it does. It's called the Montecito. It's on the top, and then the bottom. It, that's why you can't really see it on my phone. Is it on our city website? No. You'd have to go on the internet. It's Elements, ElementsArch.com. No, no, just oh, not Montecito, it. just oh, ElementsArch. A oh, win win. Um, yes, sir. If we were to, on the sign program, give them yes. all our comments. Yeah, that's it. This is the website. Uh, right. We'll do it. And go down um, to a residential. We don't no, up, finalize up, up, it here, up, but right there. Planning Commission. Click on it. Yeah. Um, can the. And then go, keep going. <coughs> resolution. Right there. Such that Click on that project. If we want to review the sign some more. They get right all their approvals for the building and everything else. It's right there. Yeah, we can condition. Can we do it we where we condition? Could. Essentially, a. I think I might have. If you do, I think there might be another one that shows. Yeah, there you go. Uh, prior to finalization of the master sign program specifically. Oh, there you go. Okay, I think we, we've got a. Way Is to there go another there. image of that sign? I think there might be one from the front. Um, if you can. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Where, that, is, it, where is this project? Yeah, there's a this is up in um, Walnut right. Creek. Oh, it's in North, huh? Yeah, but we, it, it was definitely a Spanish revival. But that was the name of the project. It reminds me of the way that they do the gateway features when you go. What was the name of the, the project? Club. It's called the, the Montecito. Montecito. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. They have that really we nice, had a good signage. They have that nice feature of the, if you go to the sports park when you walk into the pool, they have these two pretty like really old project. school like nineteen twenties yeah. diving lady <laughs> tile there. features. They're just beautiful right next to this fountain, and it really really creates a nice uh, the, the pool house there, and uh, it's just really. Beautiful. I wonder if you could incorporate the project name in the fountain somehow. Yeah, cool. That'd be a cool idea. Bart, did you have a procedural comment? Yeah, um, we'll let Adam explain it to you because if we don't, um, if we wanted to approve this, move it on without finalizing the signage, take it down. Yeah, so one of the options the Planning Commission would have is um, uh, requiring a final review and approval by the subcommittee after the projects. Uh, Review. On the signage, oh, review by the resolution by the planning will approve commission. the building and everything, but the signage, if we choose to come back, then we could finalize it. But mm -hmm. that way, everything moves forward, and yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and we can look at the sign and, and submit. Yeah, it yeah, yeah exactly. So they can right. Yeah, and there's a possibility it'll, it'll all get approved at the next level. I mean. Yeah, I would recommend that maybe like the sign locations, the number of signs be identified for the planning commission, <coughs> the specific sign types, styles, lighting, those types of details. We can leave up to the design review subcommittee for an after the fact approval because uh, that would be a that would be rel a relatively minor modification in the in the scale of the project proposed. 
clarification on that. Is that a preference or if they want to make modifications to bring back to planning commission? Um, no, they could make for the planning commission meet, but rather than bringing it back here another time. Oh, sure. Okay. This would allow the project to move forward. It's an option. And, then, like it as a plan. and then at planning commission's discretion, you can say, we think this still needs a little bit more work. Mm -hmm. If more you feel that way yeah. at that point. Okay. Well, hopefully, yeah. by then you could probably just make us a medal and they can take a look at it. And if they need to yeah, quite possible. Yeah. yeah, right. You could bring it. So okay. by the time you go to, in front of the commissioners, yeah. you're all good to go. Sounds good. So, whether we talk on timing wise with. I'll connect with you on that. There's okay. So, typically, from the point that I have final plans, it'll be a month after that point for the hearing because we have to do. Uh, noticing and a number of other things right. that are a couple weeks ahead of that, so that's going to be the general timeline. So I'll be I'll connect with you okay. on that. All right. um, if the committee members don't have any final thoughts, I just wanted to get a little bit of clarification on. Uh, we had talked about that corner um, and potential parapet reductions. I just want to make sure I'm clearly understanding the the thoughts that uh, you had, Bart. You especially had made some. Um, well, I, I annotations. Look the thing. I think the thought is try to make the dome more, more prominent. prominent. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and was there agreement to push that parapet back that runs the frontage of the building, or was there a preference that with with? Oh, your recommendation to do that? <coughs> He's talking about right here, I think. This portion. That's correct. The yeah. one is split here. The yeah. split on the two sides. Um, I'm kind of soft on that one, but you know, I really like to keep. Yeah, I mean, right you need now. some room for that mechanical equipment, so I think it's fine. Okay, that's what I needed. Are you? Yeah, I mean, it's looking good. It, it just you know, a few of those details and yeah. the corner element that's going to be an important sure. feature. And then I like that the, uh, the name of center maybe goes right where the fountain is, uh, with some mm -hmm. tile work, you know, like what you have over there. Look oh, at that fountain, that one nice. kept strong. I think it's beautiful. I mean, they <laughs> work it in the, yeah, they work it in the, kind of the, the I love that. It'd be cool. Ross did that even down at the beach club. Oh, you're right. Yeah. They have those panels. So what yeah. happens is you see the bathroom, the bathroom's down at the T Street Pier, and then the Ralphs, they, they had those panels, but they didn't do a live fountain. And one of the reasons it's good for that is it does the scaling is always a little rough. You have to clean it a lot maintenance-wise. They have these really nice murals. Sometimes there's a picture they did at the Ralphs, but get these nice murals. You can incorporate the name of the building in there, which is a nice touch. But I love the artistic quality of it. Yeah, so what you're saying is they could do a nice mural even using tile. Yeah, that's it. The name of the project. Right. The and maybe you don't need to find. Yeah, it's always hard to maintain fountains, you know, and those things. Scale Fountain out. is life, you know. I don't know. It's, if you want it, it's fine. Do you have a <laughs> still inside the kinetic uh, uh, sculpture? No, we have yeah. a nice landscape inside, you know, in the courtyard. I do love it, but then it is a noise masker too. I guess I like the sound of water. That's what I was saying about Master Street. It'll make sitting outside very pleasant. Very popular, like the data point mural they have, you know, when you're going through the bridge, they have oh, really yes, pretty yeah, yeah, that was cool. And some sculptures and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, it's a nice, plan. right? You have enough, okay? Yes, good work. Record. We're excited about the project, yes, thank you. Excellent, well, same here, yeah. Can't wait to get this thing started. I bet you can't. <laughs> Do everything we can to keep it moving for you. When are the, so I noticed that the, the top tune lot is already going. Mm -hmm. We're already on construction. When is it that the um, dentist office is going to be brought online? Yeah, they'll be going pretty soon. One of the things that's a hitch for them right now, they're uh, pull sign um, cantilevers across the off ramps. So they have to get a Caltrans um, e permit to remove the sign. What about um, their coastal commission permits? Was that an arduous process for them? I don't that? know that they are in the coastal commission. I think they're the just outside. The coastal goes through these two properties, so I think they're on the other side they're of it. Just beyond it. We, we had hoped also if we could get a little feedback from you guys after the fact of this is, is how do we run that coastal commission process concurrently? Like, is there a way of doing that so that we can? We can go the coast. So this is in the zone of coastal commission. 
this yeah. property. This right? property, yes. yes. Yeah. So um, it, it's kind of at the developer's risk because if the Coastal Commission comes back with uh, changes, we got to make them. Yeah, and if either the Planning Commission or the Coastal Commission make changes, you'd have to go back. Um, and the Coastal Commission would typically prefer that we approve the project before they review it. So um, you could always go through the process of submitting since it takes forever to get in front of them. Um, it doesn't sound like you're that far away from the Planning Commission. Um, yeah, at least start starting to put together that application, I think, is, is fine. Usually, how long it takes so the mm. coastal commission? That's a great question. Well, they they well they have the answer to this. <laughs> Sometimes I've seen it in about 10 <laughs> months a year. Did the, other, did the other Alpena Rail project also have coast commission? Did they have to go through that? The, the, the one down the street? The, I don't the think they did it. I think they're... You just these guys just we're just exceptionally lucky. You're, yeah. This property is bisected yeah. by the coastal line. Yeah, so the coastal boundary is going by through these by blocks, every aspect and then it goes. I, know, yeah. <laughs> I think it's I think it's behind the alley. I mean, you can bring <laughs> that up. There's a map for there. that. No, it does. Yeah, we looked at it. Okay, it comes right there. Right yeah, the bisects. Oh man, we're. Is, can you pull up the... Uh, so I don't have... Is it on this? It's not on no, this it's one. not on the community map one, and I don't have a, a quick link to our... You know what, though? You have it in the... I saw it in the... Uh, staff report. It's, it's, yeah, it's on the staff report. Okay, let me... Well, we looked at it. Remember that line where it went through the... So it should go to the inside of the... There you go. There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's a boundary determination, you know, the station should go to the inland side of the right away. It's usually a good ticket. Yeah, yeah. Can you use the percentage? <laughs> Can we appraise the area? Can you just fill that in? We put the front out. We're halfway in and they're going to review 100% of the project. Yeah. This yeah. is kind of similar with outlets. None of the outlet shops are in the coastal zone, but the development as a whole was, so they still have to go through that process. So to the answer to that is, is it's difficult to say on the timing. I think if you do a fully developed project that has a strong yes from the city of St. Clemente, you run less risk of Coast Commission interference, but they usually t do take a pound of flesh in their own way. Like, uh, you know, the, the water, you know, whatever. And remediation. But I think the there'll be less concern here because we're, we're not in a, uh, near a canyon lot. We're not near... Bluff, um, it's an infill. We're providing housing situation. Providing it does have the affordable, affordable housing. housing. Yeah, they're, they're big on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, they love that. They, they do. So it's a big buzzword. Yeah. So we uh, we can talk about concurrent processing, but um, again, you've heard from three of the seven planning commissioners, so you don't know for sure that uh, approval is there. So there is a, at your own risk. But I can work with you on that. Uh, it's and direct you to where the application information so is for posting. Uh, so if planning commission approves the project, they uh, after appeal period, whatever that 15, 20 days, whatever it is, can be proceed with the construction documents same time con concurrently with the uh, coastal commission or uh, it's at risk. Yeah, it's at risk. Yeah, it's at risk. And we, that's going to be a tough thing because our building permit applications expire. After six a months, period of time. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. Yeah. Is it six months? Is it six months? I, I don't it's remember. Is there a month? Months, it's, it's, right. Right. There's it's triggers. They call for a site inspection. inspection and we'll keep right. going. Oh, and then yeah. Well, not you that. Can get then you can call for an extension. You know, submit four times. No, as soon as you call for an inspection, it just then you need another one. But it's like the clock starts to get that process. Let's say there's no changes between a potential planning commission approval and a. Uh, coastal Commission approval. The Coastal Commission may still. This is not going to be a. a, a, a I, I, I would be shocked if this is a letter of exemption or a waiver. So it's a full CDP, which means it, it's at least. I, I don't. I don't want to give time frames because I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. But some projects have been taking a year or more to, to process yeah. the coastal. I had a project. You know, it went eighteen months. Coastal Commission in Huntington Beach. Uh, so, uh, if Planning Commission approves it and then goes to the Coastal Commission after the year, the one year, they come back, they can change. Well, what is it that they can change on the project? 
technically the Coastal Commission can change whatever they want. Um, most of the time they're not going to change major aspects of the project. Should there be you know modifications from the Coastal Commission if they're if they're deemed um, insignificant modifications to the project uh, planning staff the city planner can, can make a determination that it's consistent with what the planning commission approved and you wouldn't have to go back if there are major changes to the project however it would probably need to go back to the planning commission oh but in this location it would i doubt that would happen make, yeah if they make, yeah. make major they're going to look more into happen. the the water quality management i guess you know, that sounds right. storm, yeah, storm system, you know, and uh, that's... They tend to also take on a lot of the affordable housing access to the beaches thing, so the inclusion of a unit does help matters yeah. because they and like to, you know... And you're not affecting access to the beach, you're no, not either. affecting, really you're not affecting um, view of the ocean from the freeway, which they don't say they care about, but they do, sometimes. they hum and haw about it. Um, well, the, the I think general plan is the process is they should... Yeah. Wrap their arms around. I would say. Yeah, the uh, general. Uh, oh, there it is. is. We're coming off of there, yeah. So the general plan has a uh, policy about minimizing obstructions um, of new development uh, of the ocean view from the five freeway. I think the grade here it, it goes is low enough yeah. that it's probably not going to have an effect. But like that. that the pyramid shape um, stucco over to the right side of the, up here, right under the two palm trees for the right. That one right there. That's a one story building, correct? It's got a, yeah, but that, it's got a tall that projects. ceiling yeah. or ceiling height, which then kicks everything up. But I think by the time you get where this project's going to be, I think it gets low enough where your that dome is not going to have a significant well, impact. So you might need to do a, like a, a computer view of it. So that's what this is, actually. That's what, yeah. yeah. So this, where's this, their building? This is the right. Let me go up to yeah, the first view again. So this arch there. The trick is the freeway goes up a little bit there, and then you've got the off ramp that goes down. So is the off ramp considered a view part of the view corridor or no? Um, no. Okay. Our, you should our code doesn't doesn't block the it center at all. line of the freeway is the, the point of elevation. Well, the only place that I think you can actually see this building from the freeway is from if you're a passenger in the slow lane. So exactly. most of the freeway is not even able to see it. But yeah, the, the off ramp would create a situation where no development would occur. Yeah, it's just it's, but I don't think that's, I don't think the view quarters off ramps, right? Because you're, you're going <laughs> to lose right behind the the uh, dentist office. The dentist office wouldn't be there. The, yeah. the um, site wouldn't you have covered that. Well, we we're asking for the height, you know, and that uh, due to affordable units, you know, that we get some break in there. Would that be a issue for the Coastal Commission that they come back and say you're exceeding the height that is set, you know, by the City of San Clemente? Uh, would that be uh, something that they can look into it? Are you? Are, is this request going to include density bonus sessions or waivers for an increase uh, in height? Or well, is it not for an increase in not height? Not for an increase heights for the balconies on the back. Correct. That's the only waiver is for the uh, for that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that'll be something taken up by the. Uh, Planning Commission, but um, yeah, as long as they're not over the height, I don't think Coastal would hate the balconies in the back either. They're probably I don't you know, think they they're would. probably even liking that at some point because of the access and that would indoor outdoor living. Yeah, you know. and the height for the balconies that's that's to, is that to provide urban out urban Ooh. open areas. That's for the That's setback the of the purpose of having the balcony. Know, it's private open space yeah. is what it is because it's below the roof line. I mean, it's not even. Well, it is this uh, railing, the handrail. Yeah. It's not the structure. You know. But it's it's to provide urban open area for yeah. the individual unit. Yes, correct. Yes. All right. So okay. Yeah, we talked about just not using glass. Right, right. Well, I did not have a glass before. I think the, the, the exception is is that these needed to be stepped back 
a significant portion, right? And so they allowed them to protrude a little farther. I think what the step back was supposed yeah, to be that's, six feet. That's the one exception request um, connected to the affordable unit is the, let me just go to that view. It's supposed to be step back and this allows them to come out to, uh, the, metal. to this wall. It's not within that 13 feet, you know. Yeah, so on this elevation, these balconies here, actually the, the, the planes are fine. The planes are back beyond the setback. Uh, but there's like a, a total height limit that's referenced that says um, nothing can be above, and the line is essentially right here. This yes. height within thir uh, 13, 13 feet. feet of the property line. Yes. And so a portion of these railings fall within that 13. I think that's a minor. So that's that's the that's exception very, request. That's a very of minor them. exception. It's pretty innocuous considering. Compared that. to what we just was all evolved from. <laughs> this is not a project. <laughs> it's not a, no. This yeah. is like trivial. This is yeah. yeah, this is reasonable. This is like what it should be. Considering the amount of variances that some of the neighbor projects ask for, right? Variance after exception after variance. This is all very vanilla. Yeah, this is fine. So I think it's attractive. And knowing the makeup right now of the planning commission, I think you're pretty darn safe. Very good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your uh, advices and the comments. You're welcome. Finally got it going. I'm here to help. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Why well, don't you think we're adding value? value? That's amazing. amazing. Definitely. Did. We don't want to slow you down. No, yeah, no. We have that value. You want to make sure that you got something that is going to go with the city. Concept and it's going to look good. You got the agenda. Yeah. Do the uh, sure. Adjourn. I don't. I gave. We're going to move back to our meeting. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, sure. You're welcome to hang out. We're just going to. Okay. Thank you so much, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will move that we uh, adjourn to the next uh, regular meeting of the Design Review so Subcommittee sorry. to be held Wednesday, November 23rd. Uh, we'll meet on the 23rd, Adam? Uh, that one is November. No, oh, that's I canceled. Apologize. It's the. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Something bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Later, guys. I, I thought we were not. That's like Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah we're not going to meet we, that week. We discussed this last time. I, I thought I had. Uh, I see December 14th. December 14th is accurate. Okay, so I will uh, move we adjourn to the uh, next regular meeting of the, um, I'm sorry, I spaced on the date. The December 14th. The 14th, okay. Yeah, the next uh, regular meeting of the Design Review Subcommittee will be held Wednesday, December 7th at 3 p.m. here at uh, the conference room at uh, City Hall. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need to also change it from the community.